It's a four-year-long quest for survival on a deserted island. When he was thirsty, he drank the island's dew. When he was hungry, he ate live fish from the sea. For 1,500 days, he built all kinds of survival tools with his bare hands on an island in the middle of nowhere. He had to learn how to drill wood for fire, how to catch food, to escape. He built his own life raft, drifting at sea for over 800 miles. Will he be able to escape from the deserted island? How will he cope with life when he returns to society? Chuck is the head of a courier company. He is a very disciplined worker. He is a known workaholic. His job is to fly deliveries all over the world. But despite this, he and his wife are very much in love. On Christmas Eve, he promised his wife that he would be home for Christmas with her. He was delivering the last of his deliveries. He takes out a Christmas present from his wife. It was a pocket watch with his wife's picture on it. But what he didn't know was that this gift would become his hope for survival. As he went to the bathroom to wash his hands, suddenly there was a loud bang. A strong draft sucked him up. The whole plane began to shake violently. The captain helped him back to his seat, fastened his seat belt. He picked up a life-saving valve. The captain told him that the plane might have to make a crash landing at sea. Chuck's life jacket fell to one side in the panic. The pocket watch his wife had given him tumbled to the other side. Chuck didn't hesitate. He climbed for the watch without a second thought. But by the time he reached for his life jacket, it was too late. The plane plunged 10,000 meters into the sea. A huge amount of seawater poured into the cabin. Chuck was instantly submerged. He rushed to open the life valve in his hand. Fortunately, the valve was not blown through his mouth. The gas filled quickly and carried him to the surface. By now the sea had turned into a sea of fire. He fought his way up to the valve, holding onto the rope for dear life. He watched as the plane sank to the bottom of the sea, but there was nothing he could do. With a huge wave coming in, the lifeboat was as fragile as a leaf. This was the first time he had seen the horror of the sea. He didn't know how long he had been asleep. When he woke up again, he found himself adrift on a deserted island. He found a pager on his person, but it was broken. He hastily pulls out his pocket watch. It's broken too, but he still has his wife's picture. Some deliveries from the plane had washed ashore. He collected the courier and the life-saving valve. He came to shore and took off his soaked clothes, but he still couldn't accept that it was a deserted island. He shouted as loud as he could, but all he could hear was the sound of the sea. He had to draw a distress sign on the beach, hoping that a passing plane would see him. He then made a simple shelter out of a life-saving valve. He spent the night looking at a picture of his wife. But the next day, the distress signal he had drawn was already half submerged by the sea. He had to find some wood to replace it. And then, he started to collect the deliveries that were scattered, hoping to return them when he was rescued. In the heat of the day, he hadn't had any water for a long time and was already thirsty. At that moment, an object fell on him. He picked it up and saw that it was a coconut. He decided to hydrate this man was desperate to pick up a coconut and smash it against a rock wall because he had been stranded on a deserted island for days without food or water. But the coconut was too hard. He picks up a stone and pounds it again. But the stone broke in half. But one of the stones became so sharp it could be used as a knife. After a lot of trouble he finally got to drink the coconut milk. But drinking water alone did not solve the problem to fill his stomach. He decides to go fishing in the sea, but he lost his shoes when the plane crashed. He didn't catch any fish. His feet were bruised and battered by the rocks. He had to cut his trousers open. He made a simple pair of cloth shoes. He then headed for the hills. When he reached the top he started to look around him, but all around him was the sea. It was hard to get out of here, but suddenly he saw something on the beach. It was a man. He rushed down, but when he swam in front of him, he realized it was his dead colleague. He fought back the pain in his heart. He dragged the body to shore. Then he took off his colleague's shoes and compared compared it to his own feet, although they were a little small, but they were still wearable after he had modified them. He also found a torch from the corpse. It was also usable. He then buried the body. He also helped to carve the headstone. At night, he could hardly sleep looking at his wife's picture. It was probably the only thing that kept him alive now. Soon there were no more coconuts left. He had to drink the dew from the hills. He collected the dew little by little. Another night, he was too hungry to sleep. He had just arrived at the beach when he suddenly noticed a bright light in the distance. On closer inspection it was a boat. He he was so excited that he shouted as loud as he could, but the boat was too far away from him. It didn't even notice him. At dawn he tried to row across in a life-saving valve, but a huge wave smashed him into the sea. The valve was punctured. His leg was pierced by coral. Dragging his injured body, he made it back to camp. The dew he had collected had been drunk. At this point he is running out of food and water. Looking at the delivery box in front of him, he couldn't care less. He decided to open the delivery, hoping to find something to eat. The first box contained some cassette tapes that were useless. The second and third were a volleyball and a divorce settlement. They were also useless. Luckily, 
The fourth was a pair of roller skates. Looking at the sharp ice skates, he got a coconut and tried it out. It split with ease. The fifth was a lady's dress. This might be useful. There was one last box left. He was about to open it. But when he saw the pattern of wings on the box, he hesitated. Perhaps he felt that the wings represented hope. In the end, he kept the box. Then he cut open his shirt with his roller skates. He made a simple dressing for the wound. And he made a fishing net out of his skirt. He went out to sea to catch fish. He stuck a sharpened branch into a crab. But eating it raw was too much to swallow. Follow. He realized he needed a source of fire, so he started the most primitive way of drilling wood for fire. He grinds from day to night, until his hands were worn out the next day, and there was not a spark in sight. This made Chuck furious. He grabbed a volleyball and threw it, but after he calmed down, he saw the bloody palm marks on the volleyball. He suddenly had an idea. He actually drew a smiley face on the volleyball, and named him Wilson. He also had his first friend on the island. Chuck is stranded on an uninhabited island, and his only friend is a volleyball with a smiley face. Although it's a volleyball, it gives Chuck a great deal of encouragement. He begins to try again to drill wood for fire with a lot of effort. This time, he finally succeeded. He squealed with excitement. In the evening he gathered around the fire, and he ate the seafood barbecue he had always dreamed of. He talked to Wilson about his experiences. Wilson had long been a pillar of strength for him. Four years have passed since then. Chuck's eyes are now steely. His body was marked by the years. Wilson was a different man. One day Chuck was awakened by a noise. He came out and saw that it was a plastic cover. He looked at the cover and saw that it had suddenly been knocked over by a gust of sea air. A thought struck him. If he waited until the wind changed direction and used the cover as a sail, then he could escape from the island. And so he did. He prepares to build a log, gathered a lot of wood, then ripped off the bark, wove ropes to hold the logging together. Chuck tripped all the bark off the trees. He even used videotape. But the rope was still not enough. He had no choice but to climb to the top of the mountain. Here he had left a rope for his suicide. And now this rope was his hope. With the rope, the logging was soon complete. The wind had finally changed, and Chuck had made up his mind. He took Wilson with him, and the unopened delivery set off in the logging. Again, he encountered the same waves that had knocked him over the last time. But this time he caught the moment and opened the sails. And with great difficulty, he made it out. Escaped from the place that had held him captive for four years. But when he looked back at the island, he felt a sense of sadness. No one could understand the pain. And so the man and the ball began to drift on the sea. He spent the rest of his life drinking rainwater when he was thirsty. He fished in the sea when feel hungry. But then one night a huge storm hit. The sails were blown away by the gale. Chuck could only cling to Wilson. But eventually he too fell into a coma. When he woke up from his coma, Wilson was gone. He had been swept away by the waves. Chuck jumped into the water against all odds. But there was nothing he could do. He watched as Wilson was swallowed up by the waves. He had lost his partner of four years. Chuck was devastated. He threw away his oars and tried to go with the flow. Just as he was about to give up, a cargo ship appeared in front of him, and Chuck was finally rescued. The company held a reception for him after that. He was also given his daily needs, but now the only person he wants to see is his wife Kylie. For years had passed and things had changed. The wife he'd been thinking about for so long had married someone else. At night, he looked at the pocket watch he had guarded so desperately. He found the courage to find Kelly. Just as he was about to ring the doorbell, the door opened. It turned out that Kelly had been waiting for him. But when Chuck entered the house, he found out that Kelly was not only married, she had a lovely daughter. Chuck knew he had lost her for good. He gave Kelly the pocket watch she had given him back. Looking at the rusted pocket watch, Kelly finally realized how much this man loved her. Kelly dragged Chuck to the garage. This is where Chuck's car used to be parked. The car held memories that only belonged to them. Two people who were so in love, but couldn't be together. And when Chuck drove off, Kylie couldn't hold back any longer. She chased him out, crying and screaming. Screaming. He shouted that his former lover had heard Kelly's cries. Chuck, who had just driven a short distance away, backed up in a hurry. The two kissed each other in the pouring rain, and they said how much they loved each other. Then Kelly got into Chuck's car. She looked at Chuck with great affection in the car, but Chuck said it was time for you to go home. And then, he drove her home, because Chuck knew it was no longer possible for them. And since he was given the chance to live again, then, he had to live it up. Now he decided to return the package with the wings of hope. He returned the note he had left next to it. It read, Thank you for saving my life with this package. As he stood at a crossroads, it was as if he had to choose the rest of his life. The film is like life. As long as hope remains intact, no matter how many setbacks we encounter, we will reach the other